Good afternoon. Today we're headed out to Disney Springs because some of the Disney resorts opened up today and I'm kind of interested to see if the buses are running from Disney Springs to the resorts because you can't just go and park at a resort without a reservation for uh, either to stay there or to eat at one of the restaurants and those are a little bit hard to come by right now. So I'm gonna see if I can just go park at Disney Springs and take a bus over to one of the resorts. If not, we can go have a look around Disney Springs. So as you guys know, I've been wearing a mask everywhere that I go because it is required at these places. It's part of the rules to go to say Disney Springs or Universal or SeaWorld or Busch Gardens, places like that, they are requiring you wear a mask. So as I've been wearing the mask in these videos, some people were leaving comments saying that I could be suffering from uh, carbon dioxide toxicity because I'm not getting enough oxygen through the mask. So what I did is I went out to Amazon and I found this little meter here. This is a blood oxygen saturation meter. It tells me my pulse and how saturated my blood is with oxygen. About 30 bucks on Amazon, not too bad. We'll put a link in the description down below if you guys are interested in seeing this or buying one for yourself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a reading before I leave for Disney Springs, before I put a mask on at all today, get a baseline reading. And then when we get to Disney Springs, we'll walk around in the hot sun, wearing the mask, never taking it off, and if we go to one of the resorts, we'll walk around the resorts, still wearing the mask. I'm gonna wear the mask all day. And then at the end of the day or throughout the day, I will take readings on this little meter here and see if my oxygen level goes down or not. So let's get a reading and then head to Disney Springs. This is the same sort of machine they used when Jen was giving birth in the hospital to make sure that her oxygen levels were good. So we're gonna turn it on, let it boot up, and then we're gonna stick our finger in and let it get a reading. Let's see what we got here. I don't know if you guys can actually see that. And sorry it's flashing, there's just a different frame rate on the LED readout on this machine than there is on the camera. All right, so I have a 96% blood oxygen level. There it is, 97% blood oxygen level. And my pulse is 95. So let's head out to Disney Springs and see how that changes. So here we are at Disney Springs. I did wanna mention that according to the Lung Institute, the normal blood oxygen saturation level for adults is 94 to 99%. And anyone with an oxygen saturation below level 90 will require supplemental oxygen. So you definitely need to see a doctor if your blood level is below 90% oxygen saturation. So like we said earlier, we were at like 96, 97 before we left the house. Got my mask on. This is a two layer fabric mask with a uh, PM 2.5 filter inside of it. And it's very like nice and tight. So I don't have any air leaking up here. You can see I got my sunglasses on. It's not fogging up my sunglasses at all. And I've got this, this thing on my neck here that's like an ear saver. So it is keeping the mask nice and tight against my face. So it should be as good of a experiment as you can do. Although this is not scientific by any means at all. So we're just going off consumer products and seeing what happens. Let's head into Disney Springs. Just walking up to the temperature screening. It is much busier today than it was the last time that we were here. Right as soon as we get into Disney Springs, they have a sign out here saying that Disney cloth masks are now available at the Marketplace Co-op. Originally, you could only order these on Shop Disney. Now it looks like you can buy them here. We came over to the Disney Springs bus board because they are running buses today. So that's good looking. I want to head over to the Boardwalk Resort. Nice outdoor walking area where we can walk around the resort and look around. Let's see if we can do that. I don't know if it's like possible yet because we're not staying at a resort. We're gonna go find out right now. As we're walking up to the bus here, you can see lots of social distancing markings right here. All right, number 10. Let's see if we can get on it. it seems like it just showed up. Oh, it's just leaving. Oh, dang. So this is kind of neat. We can see Mike and Sully here on this bus. There's a goofy bus over here. Anything else? Oh yeah, we got Mickey, and then we got a Star Wars one. On the other side, it looks like a Disney Plus one passing by. Lots and lots of different kinds of buses. What's this one? Oh, is this Cars? Ooh, that's fun. Something else that I just noticed is that they do have hand sanitizer available for you while you're waiting in line here. And these seem to be at every bus stop. So you can sanitize your hands when you get off the bus or before you get on it. So while we're waiting for our bus to show up, I figured I would let you guys know it's about 1.15 in the afternoon, and it is 93 degrees out in the shade. It was a pretty hot day. Um, the Disney Springs was much more crowded than the last time that we were here. I don't know if it's because like it's lunchtime right now, but it, there were a lot more people coming in than the last time that we were here. Uh, after we go through the boardwalk, we're going to kind of walk around the boardwalk for a little bit, kind of like have a peek around, see what's going on there. Then we'll come back over to Disney Springs, 
have a look around, see if there's anything new going on, see what the crowd level's like, maybe a little bit after lunchtime, in between lunchtime and dinner. Also, I'm interested to see uh, where Gideon's is going. So, after reading the blog post, it said that it was across from Jock Lindsay's. Then if you go on Gideon's website, it says that it is adjacent to the bottling company, which is Morimoto's. And they say it's an old brick building, which the only old brick building adjacent to Morimoto's is the entrance to Raglan Road. So I don't think they're going to put their Gideon's Bakehouse in the entrance to Raglan Road. And then some other people were saying that the Rustic Cuff is just a pop-up, so they're probably going to take the place of the Rustic Cuff, but the, I have to look and see if that's an old, old brick building. I'm interested. We'll see. Maybe there'll be signs up or something saying like, coming soon, Gideon's. We'll find out a little bit later. So on the bus, they have little signs here. So this is like, you, one party gets to sit here and then it, there's a physical divider and a space between them and another party. And this party here. And then here's a third party. And so on. Fourth party with a physical divider. And then a seat that says, for your safety, not available. Oh no, the king of the bus seat's not available. Oh, this is interesting the way that they have it set up. Oh, oh my goodness. Guys, check it out. King of the bus. King of the bus. King of the bus. Been a long time. Oh, I just noticed they zip tied all of the fabric handles or fabric straps up. So those are not available for use. Thought maybe the Skyliner would be running, but it looks like they're all stopped. But they are back on the line. For a while, they weren't even on the line. The cabins weren't even on the line. So we have officially made it to the Boardwalk Resort. I'm going to show you guys here at the bus stop, they have physical distancing markings all around so that you know where to wait to get on the bus. And there it is. Ladies and gentlemen, we are officially back on Disney property at a Disney resort here at the Boardwalk. And we're not going to go through the entrance here. We're going to kind of go around the outside. There's a little walkway that leads down to the actual boardwalk. We're going to kind of walk around the boardwalk a little bit. See if we can see Epcot maybe. The entrance to Epcot. So something that should be mentioned about the ride over on the bus. The straps for hanging on while you're standing up were tied up. So I don't know if that means like you're not allowed to stand on the bus anymore. If they're just or if they're just expecting there to not be enough people to warrant standing up on the bus. And I think the way that it works, it wasn't really explained to me. There wasn't anything going on, like no signage or anything saying what the numbers on the seats mean. But I think what it means is everybody in your party sits on the same number. So if there's two people in your party, everybody sits on number one. If there's six people in your party, everybody sits on a number two because there were six seats labeled number two. And then there was the physical barriers and there were seats that were marked unavailable so as to promote physical distancing. Like I said, I was the only one on that bus. Today is the first day that some of these resorts are open. So yeah, I don't expect to see a lot of people today, but let's go walk around the boardwalk. So here we are at the boardwalk inn. They got signs out here that say health and safety notice, wear face coverings and maintain physical distancing. Oh, and you like by entering, you're confirming that you're not experiencing any of these symptoms. Interesting. And then there's another sign over here that says just a COVID-19 warning saying being here, there is the risk that you could be exposed to COVID-19. So Disney World does not take any responsibility. All right, let's go down to the boardwalk. See if we can see some Epcot scenes. And also if there's anybody else out here on the boardwalk, kind of interested to find out. Also, I'm still using the Sony ZV-1 and I'm walking down the stairs. How does this look as far as the stabilized shot goes? I feel like it, I'm walking with it and it looks pretty darn stable on the screen. Wow. This is weird, right? Feels almost abandoned here. I know like there's another couple over there, but other than that, it's like nobody out here. Also, I feel kind of weird because there's no music on. Like, why isn't there any music playing? Isn't there normally, it's like always so loud here. It's kind of calming and nice and relaxing. This is weird to me. Wow. Look at this. This is beautiful. And it's also so interesting because it is so dead out here. And it makes sense because like you, there's a lot of requirements for being here right now, especially like staying in a room right now because they were not accepting new reservations. You had to have made this reservation before COVID-19 and adjusted it to the first day of opening. And 
I don't know that it makes a lot of sense to be here right now because the parks aren't open yet. Got some tables out here with some signs on it. it says for your safety, maintain physical distancing. And you can see they've moved the tables pretty darn far apart. And I think that these are the tables for Abracadabar. I can see that they've got some outside here and they are spread apart with the same signs on them. So before we get over to the Epcot area, I did want to stop. I've been wearing this mask for a little bit over an hour now. So I wanted to stop off in like the uh, in the shade over here so we can see the numbers on our oxygen meter. Take a reading. So it looks like we are between 95 and 96. The heart rate of 90, 89. So here we are, we are walking up towards the entrance to Epcot. This is the International Gateway where you could get into Epcot if Epcot was open, which it is not. That's Epcot right there. Wow, just beyond those gates is Epcot. Let's see if we can see anything. Skyliner's not moving. I wonder if we can get closer to the gates and see if we can see some France Pavilion construction. Well, we can see a little bit of it right here. That seems a lot further along than the last time that we were here. It looks like they finished the theming, so it looks like people could go into that area fairly soon. We don't have any announced opening dates for it, though. This is the closest that we have been to Epcot in a long time. The closest we've been to a Disney theme park in months. Epcot's right behind us. Soon we'll be headed back to the other parks. We got annual pass holder previews, which we haven't seen any registration or sign up for on the 9th and 10th for Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom. We don't know what the rules are for that either. I don't know if you only get to pick one or if you can go both days. We're not sure yet. We do know for sure that Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom open up on the 11th and Epcot and Hollywood Studios open up on the 15th. Epcot is going to have Food and Wine Festival starting on the 15th. There's a Disney cast member running around on a Segway. I didn't know that Disney cast members had Segways that they could just like ride around on the boardwalk. Walking around by the Yacht Club and the Beach Club. I don't hear anybody. There's a pool right there. I don't hear anybody in the pool. It does sound like they're doing a little bit of construction up here. I don't know what they're doing construction on. We'll see when we get a little bit closer. So we're gonna walk all the way around this waterway here, but I did want to point out there is an addition going on between Swan and Dolphin you can kind of see it right there behind the dance hall. Here's a little thing that I didn't really even think about until right now, but they have set up the beach chairs to maintain physical distancing. So you can see they've got a lot of space between them. And there's like very few beach chairs out here on this beach. Kind of seems like if you're in for a relaxing vacation and you don't mind not going to the theme parks, now might be a perfect time to come down here and like stay at one of these resorts. Because look at this. There's nobody out here. Oh, okay. It looks like Yacht Club is not open, but Beach Club is. So you can see that they are doing some work on the shipwreck over here. That is the water slide for this pool. So now we're gonna walk around the other way and try to get over so we can see if we can get a look at maybe like Tower of Terror because Hollywood Studios is just on the other side over there. We've made it all the way back over to the boardwalk. It's taking a little while because we're walking. So I know these aren't available right now, but I'm interested to find out like, will they be available when the parks open up? I don't know. I, you know, I'm also interested to know if the boats will be available. I'm sure that they will be, but who knows? It does make me feel good that they thought of these sort of things. They removed the back-to-back -back seats. So there used to be a seat behind each one of these. You can see it on the ground here where it was screwed in. And they removed it to promote physical distancing. You can see Spaceship Earth through there. Do you guys see it? There it is, Spaceship Earth. So we have made it all the way around. We're in between Atlantic Dance Hall and Jelly Rolls. There's a dueling piano bar. And we are headed towards Swan and Dolphin. Wonder how close to Hollywood Studios we'll be able to get. We'll see, we're gonna walk as far as we can. The music's a lot louder over here, but it looks like they have put up some barriers. So we're not supposed to go into Swan and Dolphin. I don't think Swan and Dolphin's open yet, but we're gonna take this pathway here that will lead to where Hollywood Studios is. I just don't know how close we can get to Hollywood Studios. So I just passed by one of the boardwalk pools and it was, I mean, it wasn't packed, but there were some people hanging out in there because that's pretty much the only thing that you can do while you're here is you can go to the pool and you can eat at restaurants. That's it. Because the theme parks aren't open. You can go to Disney Springs, which I mean, that's more restaurants and shopping, but you're either staying in your room, relaxing on your balcony, just decompressing, I would imagine, just like kind of trying to get away from the world for a little bit. Going to the pool or going to a restaurant. So I've done a walking tour of this resort and we'll put a link to that in the description down below, but I never noticed that there's railings up there almost as if Somebody, like, you could go up there? I don't know if you can or can't. There's just something interesting that I noticed. It's the top of this building here almost looks like people could be up there. This still feels so strange to be walking out here. Nobody else around. No music. It's very strange. We are almost to, 
I don't know how close I'm gonna get to Hollywood Studios because I don't think they want people like walking all the way up to Hollywood Studios. I just wanna get a glimpse of Tower of Terror. Then we're gonna turn around and come back. Also, we've been walking for about two miles now. So I want to take my uh, blood oxygen level. We're coming up to a bridge. I'll stop underneath this bridge so we can have a little bit of like shade so you guys can see the numbers a little bit better. And we'll see what my blood oxygen level is like. All right, so I just checked. I got to Disney Springs and put on my mask around one and it's now 2.30. So I've had the mask on for an hour and a half. Walked two miles so far. So once we're almost up to this bridge and we'll be checking our oxygen level of our blood. All right, all right, so here's where we're at right now. Pulse rate kind of hanging out around 90. Depending on if I'm moving or not, it goes up and down, but the, but my oxygen rate staying at 96. So pretty good. So there was a security guard that stopped me right underneath the bridge there. Uh, that was as close as I could get is right there underneath that bridge. But I couldn't see any of Hollywood Studios. It was just right around the corner. I knew that I would have been able to see it if I could have just taken like three more steps, but he said, this is as far as you can go. So we're headed back. What's this helicopter? Well, there's like the news over there looking at Hollywood Studios. I wonder what for. Huh. All right, yeah. Well, I think we should get on a bus now and head back to Disney Springs. Should we take a look around Disney Springs or should we try to head to another resort? Maybe to one of the one of the monorail resorts so we can see Magic Kingdom. How about that? Also, while we're talking about the mask and how uh, so far my oxygen level is staying pretty, pretty steady, uh, I just want to show you guys how sweaty I am. It's pretty hot out here today. Nice and hot. Still, uh, 94 degrees out in the shade. It's a hot day in Florida. It is summer in Florida, so it's the way that it is. Disney duck swimming in the water. It just doesn't have the same same ring as Theme Park Pigeon, does it? This is kind of neat. There is a sign here that says Disney Vacation Club 25th Anniversary Live Oak dedicated to our members. I've seen these at other resorts. I just didn't know that this one was here, but planted April 22nd, Earth Day, April 22nd, 2016. And this is how big it is now. I feel like they planted it a little bit too close to the walkway for this to be a live oak. Like, it's gonna get much bigger. It's gonna break the sidewalk up. As I was passing by this playground here, I was kind of wondering if it was open or not. And then I saw they have chairs blocking it off. So I don't believe that this playground is open just yet. So some of the cast members were out and about kind of like greeting you as you walk in and out of the resort or like, you know, walk around it. And there's just something, it just hits differently now when they say, welcome home as they greet you. It felt good. It felt good to hear them say, welcome home here at Disney. So while we're waiting for the bus to show up, might as well take our oxygen level again, just to see what it's like. I have a feeling it's gonna be the same as it's been, but we'll see. All right, here's where we're at now. 97%, doing a little bit better. Heart rate's still kind of going all over the place. And I think that's mostly from me moving around. Well, I guess, I guess we have been walking for a little bit, so we have been doing a little bit of exercise. So I think that my heart rate probably is around 107. Yeah, you can see the beats coming through but 97% oxygen. Pretty interesting because the only buses that are running right now are Disney Springs buses. So it seems like they're coming fairly often. Back on my King of the Bus kick on the way back to Disney Springs. So after talking with the bus driver on the ride over here, back to Disney Springs, they gave me some of the rules. They said that they are going to, every time they're at a bus stop, they leave the doors open the entire time to circulate more air in. They also said that they are going to load people onto the bus so they will load parties based on size. As far as the, the line goes, they pick the largest group that goes in first, they sit in the very back, and then so on until you get to the smallest group. One wheelchair at a time, unless a party has more than one wheelchair, then they can load in two wheelchairs. But if there are two different parties with wheelchairs, they can only load one of those wheelchairs. And they said there will be no standing on the bus, and there will only be between 18 and 20 people per bus ride. So, totally different way of doing buses now. Let's head into Disney Springs. I've been walking around, I'm all sweaty check my temperature, see how it does, it should be okay. Then we're gonna go back out and get on another bus and head over to uh, Grand Floridian so we can see the castle, because I forgot they painted the castle. But we'll be able to see the new colors. So I had my temperature checked, I asked them, they said my temperature was perfectly fine, even though I've been walking around in the heat all day. So let's go get on another bus. Back at the Disney Springs bus board, we're headed to the Grand Floridian, number two. Let's head on over. Oh, well, there's Pluto. So as I got onto this bus heading to Grand Floridian, he said that there are six seats on here already numbered. So I'm guessing that means the maximum amount of parties that are available to ride on the bus are six. We are passing by the entrance to Magic Kingdom right now. Nobody's going in yet. There's 
been a long time since we've seen that. There's the Ticket and Transportation Center parking lot. All the buses are parked in there right now. Nobody else though. There was a lot of buses. I didn't realize we had this many buses. Whoa. I guess that makes sense. There's a lot of resorts. That is a lot of buses, isn't it? Holy cow. Here we are, Grand Floridian. So because only the DVC resorts are open right now, they're dropping me off at the DVC side. Here we are at the Grand Floridian. And I'm only here for one reason, and that's to look across Seven Seas Lagoon and look at Cinderella Castle. See if we can see that new paint job on it. A lot of people hanging out at this pool. All right, let's see. Where would be the best way to go? I'm assuming over that way, so let's go that way. Side note, have these sweet loungers been here this whole time? Because these look like a great place to take a nap. But we are seeing over here at the main building, the splash pad is not open currently. Oh, it looks like they're doing something. Like they've taken out all of the like slats around the drain here and it's open. Maybe they're cleaning it or something. So you guys might be able to hear some sweet dance party music as I'm walking through this nearly deserted resort. There's nobody at this pool over here. It's just so interesting. I think there are some places like Grand Floridian Cafe, I believe is open. Someday we'll actually take this boat over to Magic Kingdom. Today is not the day to do that. Just passing by Narcoosie's. Oh, this is weird. So there's a sign on the door that talks about social distancing, but Narcoosie's is not one of the restaurants that's opening right now, or that's open right now. Huh, maybe they're just getting ready for it. Ooh, look at this. Contemporary over there. Space Mountain. Monorail. Here's something that's interesting is so for the longest time, you weren't able to walk over to the Magic Kingdom because there was this waterway here. And now, they're adding a little move it like a drawbridge type bridge to get over to Magic Kingdom. So you could walk over to Magic Kingdom eventually. Not, not right now, but eventually you could. You can see they've already started putting out little temporary tape lines for social distancing markers leading up to the boats to take over to Magic Kingdom. So. I'm assuming that they are going to have the boats running back and forth from Magic Kingdom. So I came out here to try to get a look at the castle. And it looks like we can't really see it so good from here. You can see a little bit of the coloring of it. They painted it. So now it's a little bit more like pink and blue. I think what I'll do is I will head over to Polynesian Beach. See if I can get a little bit better view of it. But as we turn, you can see there's Space Mountain. And there's the train station right there. Entrance to Magic Kingdom. And then there's Contemporary and Bay Lake Tower over there. And then we're gonna turn and we're gonna look back. So we're gonna head over to Polynesia and see if we can get a better view of the castle from over there. I just realized they're not running electrical water pageant when the park opens back up, but if you listen, they are testing it. I wonder why. Definitely been a very strange day because it really feels like we're at like an abandoned Walt Disney World almost. Okay, so we're a little bit further away and we can see Cinderella Castle there. Looks good. I like it. I like the color scheme. This is as far in as this camera zooms. So here's a look at the castle. I like the new color scheme. It looks really good. So real quick, wanted to get one last look at our oxygen level, our oxygen saturation. And we are at 96 still, even though we are, our heart rate's pretty elevated because we've been doing a lot of walking. But this looks good. So it seems like a mask does not affect your blood oxygen levels. So there you have it. That was our trip out to starting at Disney Springs and then taking the bus over to the boardwalk area. We got to see Epcot. I got to see like just a teeny tiny sliver of Hollywood Studios. I couldn't show it to you guys. Then we came over here to the Grand Floridian and to the Polynesian. We got to see Magic Kingdom back there. We're getting closer and closer to the parks. Soon the parks will be opening back up and we'll be able to go in there and have a look around. It was a good day. It's kind of like a ghost town out here. Because like I said, the, the parks are not open. Only DVC resorts are open. You could only book a room if you already had an existing reservation that got canceled or moved. So you rebooked it for right now. So just a lot of little, uh, a lot of little variables that make it so that now is not a very crowded time here at the resorts. So also there's not a lot to do at the resorts. Just relax, go to the pools, eat some food. That's it. So all in all, a fantastic day. And with that being said, we are off. And we'll see you guys tomorrow 
and now it's time to help. So today's organization that we want to shine a spotlight on is Live Free USA, and they are working to create a movement for racial and economic change by increasing civic engagement and economic investment in communities of color. So there will be a link in the description down below. Make sure you guys go and you check it out. Read about this organization, kind of learn about it. Talk with your friends and family about it. If you can, donate. If not, just talking about it and learning about it really helps out. So thank you guys for watching this video.